Hi, I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Sherry. And this is our cat, Lily. This is Cinder. We've got the truck. We've got the trailer. And we're ready for our RV travel class. Prepare your RV equipment before full timing. Hi folks, I'm Rob from RV Travel Quest. I want to thank you for joining our uh, mission series. I have a lot of data in this uh, particular chapter. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was uh, preparing your RV equipment. So I'm going to kind of focus on exterior things. The truck, your RV, your motorhome, um, things that are exterior. And in the next chapter, I'll talk about getting ready or preparing your equipment for the interior of your truck or your motorhome or your trailer. So right now I just want to take the time to uh, say thank you for watching. Uh, Sherry and I have been full timers before um, back in 2005 to 2007 and with the economy and everything we got <laughs> kind of had to go back to uh, the grind and uh, recover from some damage. <laughs> But we're uh, planning to go back. So just a reminder, our goal is a two-year mission. And the reason we chose that is actually several, several people in the past, and this is learning from other people, that it's always good to have about a two-year plan before you RV or plan on full-time RVing. And this is uh, important to set up your finances. This is time uh, to set up your equipment. And it's also a chance to test the waters to find Ooh. out uh, if it's something you really want to do. Uh, living in an RV isn't for everybody. Um, and there's several different forms of how you could do it. So this is where extended travel or RV travel comes in. So that's our mission. And I'll continue to remind you of what we're trying to do in this series. And uh, let's get started. So, before we talk about the truck or the motorhome or the RV itself, let's talk about tools. <clears throat> so this is a time that you probably want to uh, pause me for a minute, grab some paper, grab a pencil or pen, and I'm just going to go through some of the things that you'll want to do. Now what I'm trying to do is to stimulate your thoughts of what it would be like to be a full-time traveler and am I prepared. The reason I want to do this is it's better to get the things you need now in this early stage than have to spend all that money at the very end. So let's get started. So now first of all, why are we getting tools? <laughs> Well, I have news for you. You're going to be fixing things. Um, things break. Uh, plumbing breaks. Electrical breaks. Mechanical breaks. Um, or damage. Uh, the strangest things. Leaks in a roof. Uh, maybe you'll have an accident uh, where you might have damaged the RV or your truck while trying to get out of a gas station. Believe me, uh, you just can't believe the things that can happen. Now, before I go any farther, I don't want to scare you either. Um, I've watched a couple that actually dove into RVing without doing any research, and they had a terrible experience. And they retired, and they actually sold the RV before they even retired because they had some bad luck. And they, I don't blame it on the RV, and I don't blame it on the overall uh, subject of RVing, I blame it on bad homework. So I'm hoping you're on this video for homework, <clears throat> getting ready for this. So a good RV trip is getting from A to B. Another good a RV trip is getting from A to B and breaking down somewhere or having an issue and being able to correct that issue to get to B. <laughs> so that's a good day. Um, so being ready for emergencies. So here's some of the things that I keep on board or, or I'm going to have on board when we at the end of our at the end of the year when we hit the road full time. And one of the silliest things is I always keep a bottle of dis distilled water for two reasons. One is batteries. <coughs> the second is 
if you have a breakdown or some, something to rinse your hands off with. And of course, I have a dog that gets thirsty. So keep a gallon of distilled water because you, you only want to use distilled water in your batteries. But it's not harmful, um, basically, as the water has been boiled. So it's probably healthier for your pet if you needed some emergency water. And then if you're working or something breaks, you change a flat tire or something, eh, get something to rinse your hands off if you don't want to use the water in the RV. <clears throat> so there's one. Another thing, keep brake fluid. Brake fluid is always, you never know when you need it. Uh, make sure you have good jacks. And make sure it's a jack that goes handles heavy uh, tonnage and will actually extend enough to uh, lift a trailer off the ground to change a tire. And, and that includes your truck. Some of these trucks, are like I have a one-ton, mine's pretty low to the ground, but other one-tons are pretty well up there. Make sure you have a block of wood or anything you have to do to make that jack not have to work so hard. The other thing you want to make sure you keep on board is funnels. Funnels to put oil in your car. Funnel to put uh, brake fluid in. Funnel for transmission fluid. Um, it's, a, it's a must. Um, otherwise you're going to be makeshifting something or getting oil and stuff all over your engine if you have to put a quarter of oil in. The other thing is gauges. I can't express this. Uh, there is a really good electronics out there if you're willing to spend the money that will actually um, monitor your tires pressure electronically and report it to you in your truck while you're running. Uh, it's an awesome system and it's highly recommended for all RVs but really recommended for uh, motorhomes. Uh, boy, I tell you, you lose a tire driving a motorhome, uh, <laughs> I've seen some pretty scary things. So uh, make sure you have like gauges, uh, it, whether you go electronic or not, but make sure you have at least manual gauges to check uh, tire pressure, um, gauges for uh, your battery, checking your battery, make sure that the cells in the batteries are good, and amp meter. Um, when you're doing work or trying to fix something or you have an electrical problem, learn to use an amp meter. At least, uh, if, if anything, just a little regular light tester comes in handy and you should get one. So you're going to be doing maintenance, so this is important to have tools to do this kind of stuff. So of course you want to have a regular tool kit. Yes, it'd be nice to have the really good fancy tools and stuff, but you know what? If you can just go to Harbor Freight and get one of those little tool kit kits, that's that means a lot. You'd be amazed how often you'll use that little kit. So uh, if you can upgrade to uh, better tools as you go, great, but uh, start with that. Uh, the other thing you're going to be using for your uh, uh, for tools is you're going to be do putting on add-ons all the time. Like, for example, I had to put vent well covers on the top of my trailer, and of course, my little tools that came from Harbor Freight sure came in handy for that. Um, which also means a lot of your sealants and caulkings. Um, nothing beats good old clear, and I like clear because clear works on every color. Clear uh, silicone uh, sealant. You never, oh my gosh, you, if you have to put a screw in or something, you want to make sure it's watertight, put some of that stuff in there. Keeping a sealant, uh, just a tube of clear uh, silicone sealant, um, very nice to have. You'd be amazed, a little leak in the roof, you could at least temporarily fix it until you can get the proper stuff. Electric cords, um, extra cords, um, especially some reason you're doing some work and you need to use some of your tools. Um, make sure you have extra electric cords. You might need a, uh, if you're in a RV park and you need to work on your RV, you may need some lighting and stuff. Uh, extra electric cords will come in very handy. And of course, having an extra light, um, whether it's a lantern or whether it's battery or whether it plugs in, get yourself some extra lights in case you have to do some work or change a tire in the dark. Okay, tape. Oh my gosh always have duct tape. You know the old saying, you can fix anything with duct tape? True statement. Make sure you have tape. Uh, electrical tape and duct tape. Those two are a must. Uh, once again, you can get that stuff real cheap at Harbor Freight. Gloves. Make sure you have gloves. 
you're going to uh, be, whether you're just working on your rig, fixing something, or working with your septic, you want to have gloves. So make sure you get some working gloves and maybe some plastic gloves so you can work in your septic tanks. Um, blocks. Wood blocks. I like to, uh, by the way, you may not know this, but if you go to like Home Depot, go find yourself a full size uh, 4 by 6 and ask the guy to cut it up for you. <laughs> It's awesome. You get your old cart, have them cut it up in maybe a foot and a half lengths. You get a whole set of those things made for you, and it'll be nice and beefy. Um, easy to store that way, and you don't have to cut them. Let them cut it for you. Now, moving down the list a little bit, um, some other things that come in handy. Uh, maybe just a little military type of shovel. Um, some reason, I've seen people take RVs out in the beach and get stuck in the sand. Um, silly things like that. Uh, some place that has really loose dirt and it's muddy than you thought it was and you get stuck. You need to dig yourself out. First of all, get some of those blocks you just cut. <laughs> dig some holes, get yourself out of that hole. A little shovel comes in handy and of course you're in an RV. Anything you can get that's small, good. The other thing they have on board, by the way, is a ladder. Uh, they have new extension ladders that work the full length of your trailer. They're semi-expensive I've seen them between 70 to over a hundred dollars but um, they're awesome so get yourself an extension ladder uh, you'll need it for washing your rig too <clears throat> and of course that means when you're washing your rigs you're gonna need extra scrubbing tools uh, especially one, a pole with a scrub brush at the end important to have uh, regs make sure you have extra regs um, one, if you're working with oil, you're working with batteries, battery uh, fluid, any kind of oils or anything, get your hands rinsed off with that distilled water you had in there and dry your hands off with a good rag. Um, waxes, of course. Um, there's not only good waxes, always like a good silicone wax, but make sure you get one that also can remove scratches. Uh, my truck looks like mint, but... Uh, I have a dog that likes to jump up once in a while, and she likes to put little scratches in. I got this new re scratch removal stuff. It takes the scratches right out. Totally amazing. So a wax and a scratch wax. Um, nice to have. Um, antifreeze. Make sure you have some of that around. If you have a pet, keep it away from your pet. You know that. Um, and the other type of antifreeze you want to keep around, uh, possibly, especially during the cold spells, is winterizing antifreeze, which is not toxic. Um, so you may not want to carry that around uh, the whole time because every time you put one of these things in your RV is making you heavier. So, but keep in mind, you're going to need it. <clears throat> and other things that people need that might come in handy, depending on the climate that you're in, but you might want to get tire covers. Uh, the, if you're parking your rig a long time in a place like Arizona, cover those tires and protect the rubber on the tires. It's amazing that hot weather is just so harsh, so harsh on RV tires. It's amazing. And, and uh, Park your car in the shade when you can. Protect the tires. Equipment, Equipment for the truck or motorhome. Motor so moving on to general tools, let's talk about your truck. And this will apply to the RVs too. But typically, if you're doing a fifth wheel of a trailer, you have a truck to take care of. And if you have a motorhome, uh, you have a motorhome. Sometimes you have a tow uh, device in a car, or sometimes you're using a dolly. So here's some of the things that I have on my list that you might want to write down. And this is just stuff to mark down and keep you thinking. Um, and there will be also you'll probably saw some graphics on here. I'll keep throwing graphics up. Uh, if you got a truck and it's a diesel. Try to get yourself, or try to install if you can, if you can afford it, an exhaust brake. Exhaust brakes basically, a, a diesel just doesn't have, doesn't hold an engine back with pressure um, like a, a gas engine does. <clears throat> so having an exhaust brake is just a push of a button and it puts a little flapper uh, inside your exhaust, which helps hold the, uh, hold the rig back, uh, especially going down a hill. So I, I have one on my truck and I... I I love it. So, one thing I did find out is those exhaust brakes are a little bit hard on turbos. I have a turbo uh, truck, and um, I actually, uh, after 150,000 miles of driving, 
my uh, mechanics have found some leaks in my turbo, and he blames it a little bit uh, on my exhaust brake. But I'm willing, so I had the turbo fix, cost me a lot of money to get all that new piping put in, but um, but that exhaust brake has been a lifesaver going down big hills like passes and stuff like that. So if you can get exhaust brake, um, mo most motorhomes already have them, um, unless they're gas. <clears throat> so that's one thing. Navigation. Um, I highly recommend that you invest money into a Magellan or a Garmin um, uh, GPS. They are lifesavers. Um, the one that Sherry and I are getting is the one from Camping World that also has good SAM listings in it too. Um, and I believe it compensates for the fact of how big your rig is. And so, um, and I think it also ties into Gas Buddy for fuel. So getting yourself a good um, navigational uh, GPS is very helpful, believe me. Uh, especially when you get into big cities like Las Vegas and stuff. Oh my gosh. Some of, uh, Salt Lake City. Oh my gosh. Uh, the freeways were nuts. Uh, thank goodness we had a good navigation system. We were using TomTom Tom back in those days, but um, the new stuff, awesome. <clears throat> Much better than what I used to have. Uh, make sure you have spare tires. Now if you have uh, a big rig, that doesn't necessarily, uh, uh, a lot of people with the big motorhomes don't have spare tires. So what they have is a tire service or AAA. So it's important you heard me talk about that a little bit in the uh, prior videos. So check your spare tires, make sure they're good, especially for your truck and stuff. Trailers too, you'll have spares and your fifth wheel will have a spare. Check them and make sure they're good. If you don't have one, get one. Trust me, I've seen several uh, RVs that blow a tire and they're not that hard to change but they are if you have the wrong jack. So remember what I said about the jacks. Either make sure you have some blocks and make sure that jack will go up high enough to lift that uh, trailer off of its spring, uh, off the ground. Okay, moving right along here. Um, this has to do with audio a little bit, but a lot of folks, um, motorhomes have like rear cameras and sometimes sound. Fifth wheels don't typically have that or trailers. Very good idea to get yourself a little set of walkie talkies between you and your partner. Um, if you have a partner with you, uh, those things come in handy. It sure keeps you from killing each other. Because um, sometimes the wave thing, get, uh, <laughs> everybody does it different. <laughs> and by the end, time you get the RV parked to place, you're ready for a divorce. So anyway, uh, to make that a little easier, get yourself some walkie-talkies. Uh, they're getting so affordable now, you may as well get them. So you can see why I'm asking you to buy all this stuff ahead of time. If you tried to wait till the end, you'd go broke and you wouldn't have money to go travel. So uh, audio. Um, uh, so another thing that's uh, pretty important is making sure that you have plenty of uh, oil on board. Uh, just at least enough to put one or two quarts of oil in a uh, diesel. Uh, if it's got a leak, it takes a lot of oil. So uh, at least uh, two to four quarts of, uh, if you got a diesel, one or two uh, uh, quarts would be just fine for regular gas. Uh, straps, uh, some reason, keep straps on board. And, and the reason is for unexpected things that you buy. <laughs> and, and, and you have just enough room a little bit on your tr uh, truck uh, to fit something. And you don't have any, make sure you have something to strap it down. Keep straps handy all the time. Or at least bungee cords. For gosh sakes, keep bungee cords nearby. You will use them. And let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, extra lights. Um, it seems like in my truck, I lose a blinker in the weirdest places. <clears throat> and they're very uh, easy light bulbs to change. But they're not easy to change when it's 9 o'clock at night and you're in the middle of the desert. <clears throat> uh, so if you have or uh, get the chance... Get yourself some extra fuses and make sure you get yourself some extra little lights for like your back lights and things like that for your brake lights. Um, it sure keeps you from at least getting a ticket or pulled over. But, um, but of course, we're talking about safety. So lights on the trailer, keep everyone, make sure every one of them's working and uh, make sure that you have spares. <clears throat> and let's see. The last thing for the truck that I uh, highly recommend is at least 
um, a compressor if you can get one, uh, some of that liquid flat stuff that you can use to help fix a tire. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, if for some reason you don't have the means to change a tire, at least have yourself a compressor and uh, or maybe you have a spare that's kind of low. Uh, you have your little cons compressor to take it back up to the proper uh, uh, pressure uh, that's required for that tire. So those are some ideas of getting your vehicle ready. So uh, I highly recommend that you start putting that kit together now. Uh, so what if it's a, you still have a year and a half to go? Start buying this stuff now because you can see just what we talked about here uh, can get costly. So start working on your kit today and start thinking and sitting back and say, what's some of the things that could happen to us? And also uh, talk to other RVers. Ask them what strange things have happened to them. They'll come up with probably some things I didn't think of. So Equipment, equipment, equipment for the for RV. The RV. The RV. All right, let's move on to the RV. I know this is getting long already, and I told you these things is a lot, so I hope you're taking notes. We're going to talk about the RV and the extra things you need to get right away. First of all, get the RV, of course, as soon as you can. So one of the first things is the electrical adapters. That'll drive you crazy. Depends where you go. Sometimes there's only 20 amps. That's terrible. 30 amps is normal. 50 amps is sometimes there's places that only have 50 amps, and you're 30 amps. So guess what? You need an adapter for regular plugs, regular 110. You need an adapter for 30 amps, and you need an adapter for 50 amps, depending on what size of rig you have. If you've got a 50 amp plug, then you need a reducer to, uh, to go down to 30 amps if that's all they have. So it'll just drive you crazy. So get those adapters right off the bat. Um, the, la um, the biggest thing I, can, I cannot emphasize enough, and they're expensive, is a surge protector. If you're only a 30 amp rig, then you only need a 30 amp uh, surge protector. If you're a 50 amp, um, I'm not sure if you can put like your 50 amp adapter on and then a 30 amp and plug in. I think you'll still be protected, but I would highly recommend that you do use the right ratings for everything. So you may have to have a 30 amp protector and a 50 amp protector. And I tell you, a 30 amp's not too bad, it's probably close to 100 bucks, but a good 50 amp is close to 200 or better. So they're expensive. But I tell you, if I've been, and you may have heard the stories, or yes, it's very true, every RV, RV park is an adventure. The other thing that we always keep in our RV is one of those simple little voltmeters, they're a little box, they cost about 14 bucks, you plug them into your socket and you can see if it's in the green. You'd be amazed when you're using power, you can see that thing move and it starts moving into the red. You're either drawing too much power or there may be a problem with the RV Park's uh, electrical hookup. I've been in places where it was going like this. And that was, I, I mean, we, uh, I was going to stay there like for a week, but it was like no way we stay in. And we got out of there because uh, something was wrong. <laughs> and uh, that simple little $14 uh, uh, adapter or voltage meter that you can plug into the wall and see in the kitchen, you just look at it once in a while, um, will tell you a lot. Not to mention, if you're running a microwave and you have a uh, uh, blow dryer going and stuff, I've seen that thing getting where it's going down low because I know we're drawing too much power. And it, I can almost see when it gets to a point we'll blow a circuit breaker in the rig so uh, it's always good to say all right sure he's dry, drying our hair with the blow dryer I'll shut off the coffee pot make sure that we have a few things off and I can see that little amp meter go right back up 14 bucks worth every penny okay so some of the things you want to do to prepare as you're getting her, um, ready for your RV is are you gonna want solar power the only reason you might want solar power is one is to keep the batteries recharged if you can't get plugged in. The other, per, uh, if you're boondocking, um, the other thing, solar power is nice to rejuvenate the batteries. And another interesting thing is you may want to switch your batteries to six volt batteries. So two six volt batteries will last six times longer than one 12 volt battery. 
so it's amazing. So um, that's one thing to know. Two is you probably want an inverter. Now, if you have a motorhome, you probably have an inverter system already. What an inverter does is basically takes 12 volt power and turns it into 110. So depending how extravagant you want to do, I'll tell you what we did, and ours is very, very simple. We put an 80 amp solar on the top of our RV. I just want something to trickle charge. We don't like to boondock that much. If I can last two or three days, I'm happy. But the other thing is we have a generator. So the generator, which is something you might want to get, um, is built into our fifth wheel. And uh, so we can help rejuvenate or run heavy um, things like uh, microwaves and, and uh, anything that draws a lot of power we can turn on the generator for a while. And if I need to charge up the batteries even faster without the solar, I've got the generator. So I'm very fortunate to have that. But the other thing is in a fifth wheel, you don't typically have an inverter to plug things in if you're just on power. So we're having a uh, just a thousand watt inverter put down by the television so we can actually watch television, some simple things on batteries. Um, I don't need to light up the, I mean, I don't need inverter power outlets all over the trailer. Um, very expensive to do that. The difference was about $150 as opposed to $1,500 to put a good smart inverter in. So solar is something you might want to consider. The batteries I already talked about. If you want to upgrade your batteries or beef them up. Furniture. Make sure the furniture in this early stages is the kind of furniture you want. So, for example, me and Sherry, we have two chairs in our RV that look really nice when we bought them, but over time we found out they're kind of uncomfortable. So we're taking our two little chairs out, and we're going to put one kind of fluffy chair in, and we only need one because we always find the other one's too close to the television. So we're going to open up a little spot so we have a place for the cat litter box. So uh, <coughs> this is a good time to figure out if the furniture works for you, the other thing, if you have pets, do you have covers for them, something to protect your furniture? Because there's a lot of wear and tear in that furniture. So um, We already talked about getting blocks and how to get them made for you. Uh, go to Home Depot or Lowe's, get yourself the size of blocks you want, and let them cut them up for you. So and then just go out in your shopping cart with all these cut blocks, and you're set to go. Brand new, too, not icky old boards. So, uh, cleaning materials for your RV. You're going to need special soaps and you probably want to make sure they're environmentally uh, good to um, um, environmentally safe. Uh, so be careful what kind of soaps you're using when you're in a campground. Remember other people use your campground too. And pets. Uh, of course make sure your spare tire is good. Uh, we talked about it already. Dishes. <laughs> this is the time to figure out what kind of dishes you will like. Dishes, um, uh, preferably cording wear type stuff that you can drop and doesn't break. Um, don't get too many dishes. Besides, most of you guys will not have dishwashers, so if yours only two, yeah, maybe two sets. Uh, and if you're going to have guests, um, then that's when paper plates come in handy. But uh, we keep only four sets of everything. Um, why carry more than you really need? And besides, it kind of forces you to is get the dishes done otherwise you won't have dishes at all so uh, I suggest a minimal amount of dishes so include uh, wine glasses coffee cups the whole thing keep it down besides remember everything is weight so make sure you're prepared for all the types of uh, cooking you want to do and sleeping this is the time to find out do you want to change the mattress Sherry and I took our mattress out and replaced it with a 10 inch um, foam mattress instead of the one that's in there. It lasted about a week and we could fill the springs. And we're kind of heavy and I got, yeah, I got weight issues. But uh, I tell you, we sleep like a baby once you invest. And we got a good, uh, we paid $450, $500 for ours. They average between $400 and $600 for a really good foam mattress. Get it. Get a firm one too. <laughs> Uh, extra lights, any kind of lighting that you want to add to the RV, this is the time to do it. Even though they try real hard to get the lighting just right, you may need some specialized lights. Um, uh, I saw a gentleman just do a video the other day where he, um, if you have a bed that lifts up and has storage underneath it, there's no light there. So he installed his own light. So 
Take a look at your lighting. Uh, this is big. I can't emphasize this one enough. Insect repellent for the rig. We got infested once in Las Vegas with those sugar ants. It's terrible, and you, it's almost impossible to get rid of them. The other places I've heard, like Alabama, has a lot of trouble with uh, ladybugs, believe it or not. Thousands of them. So, first of all, in our rig, we've gone through anything that has an opening, any tubing, uh, any kind of uh, uh, plumbing that comes into our rig, we put uh, um, steel wool in, and then we use the insulation that you spray in, and it hardens it, kind of puffs out. And anything that's got an opening going into our rig is blocked. Also, all of our vents, we put screens in. So there's actually a screen inside every vent that comes into our rig. So that means if critters get into our furnace through there, they cannot get inside our rig. Um, so something to consider. Critters are a pain in the butt. <laughs> Sorry, but I can tell you, the sugar ants back in the day were terrible. We could not get rid of them. Um, so making sure you have sprays, making sure that you do all the things in your rig to protect it, to keep the mice out and the insects. Rubber protection. Um, um, rubber protection for the slides. There's a lubricant, silicone lubricant. Make sure that you treat your slides. Anything that has rubber on it, treat them and protect them and make um, so, so they don't wear out so fast and it's easier on your slides. Okay, the next thing that's really important here is septic adapters. Septic tanks uh, or drainage is a pain. It's different everywhere you go. Some places are right there, right next to the rig, perfect. Other places, you may have to extend your, your, your tubing out all the way, or your septic tubing, 20 feet, and it's ridiculous. So make sure you have adapters. That's why you want to do all these little trips ahead of time and get some practice. And, of course, there's times where you want to uh, put a, a bridge on your, uh, on your uh, hoses to allow the uh, liquids to move down to the end. So... Um, you'll want to get some of those. I can't remember the, the particular name, but it's a bridging type of a tool that you can use to put your hoses on to create a, uh, a downward motion for them. Because sometimes the ground's not level and could cause you a real issue on drainage. So um, make sure you get some of those too. Um, the other thing that's really important is making sure that your entertainment system works the way you want it to. Um, you may have a surround sound, you may find that your movies play in that real good, but you may want your television to run through it. This is the time to make sure the audio and everything that you have in there works the way you want. Not, um, not to mention some people want satellite systems, so this is the time to put in a kingdom or, or uh, they have other systems now. That, or you may want to put a special antenna on the top of your roof and try to get free television. Uh, that's a whole other subject, and we'll try to talk about that later. But <coughs> this is the time to do this. All this stuff before you actually go full timing. And once again, just <laughs> you saw how much we got to spend on tools. Now we got to do all this stuff for the RV, um, and we've got to you, know, you got to fix up the truck and, and the way you want it to be for long uh, long term. So uh, some of the other things, outside racks, and sometimes extra. Um, uh, handle grips in certain areas. If you have uh, weak knees or you have some hip issues and stuff, you may want to add extra racks in certain places in the rigs. It allows you to get up the stairs easier, to get out of the bathrooms easier, to um, move from the upper level to a lower level if you have a fifth wheel. Um, important stuff. So this is the time to do that. Um, having a plastic tubs around for little, uh, one little, at least one, for draining things out. Uh, Lord knows why you would need to do that, but sometimes maybe you're having trouble with your septic and you know if you pull a hose it's going to spill out a little bit. Have something that can capture liquid. Um, nice to have around and when you're not using it for capturing liquid, turn it into a litter box. So, um, fuses. Make sure you have all the different fuses that go to your rig. Um, not only your truck, but also your rig. You'll need 10, 15, 20, and 25 for sure. Then you may need some specialized inline um, fuses. 
So walk around your rig and try to find out what all types of fuses you have and make sure you have a spare because the one that you don't have a spare with will probably blow. I just, this is Murphy's Law. So carpet protection. Um, a lot of people put a throw rug in the middle depending on how your rig's designed. But the carpeting is most of the time pretty good in some of the rigs, but an older rig may be a little bit tuckered out. Put a protection rug down because you'd be amazed how much dirt and grime that either kids bring in, dogs bring in, or you, you bring in yourself. So uh, uh, put a lot of uh, carpets and rugs out. Protect your floors. Good fiberglass cleaner. You want to keep that around all the time. Um, uh, especially when you're around places in the northwest like I'm at, we have a lot of trouble with trees and pitch. Um, good idea to have something that cleans fiberglass really well. The other thing is roof care. Make sure that you have something that, that can clean your roof off. And especially up here in Northwest, we have mold issues. So if you have your rig parked for a couple of months, uh, don't be surprised you got uh, mold growing on the top. It's just the nature of the Northwest. Um, in the South, the biggest thing is heat. Make sure that your um, roof is handling the heat well and not cracking. Make sure it's protected. You may be fine when you're in Phoenix and you get up to Washington State where it rains and find out, oh my God, I've got a lake now. <sighs> the other extra things you want to make sure you have is extra television cables. And those sometimes can be far away too. So make sure you don't have just a little 10-footer. Make sure you can go 20 or 30 feet with a uh, television um, coax so a lot of places provide free uh, coax TV or cable TV so make sure you have a, a fitting that will fit it. Um, water pressure is a big issue on RVs. Um, most places you go you're just fine but you want to put a little water pressure gauge or a little bit water pressure per, uh, adapter that controls the water pressure so if you get in a place that's got heavy pressure and I believe it goes past 60 pounds. I'm not even sure exactly what that number is. This will prevent it from getting too heavy and bursting or damaging the plumbing in your rig. So it's a very simple, I'll put a picture of it on the, uh, on, over me right here. Ta-da! Anyway, um, get one of those adapters. There's all kinds of them. There's some with little meters and everything. But uh, if anything, get yourself a simple one that only costs about 14 bucks. So. Uh, extra hoses, water hoses and spare hoses. One is an extra long water hose because you never know how long you're going to have to go. A 10 footer is not enough. Uh, the other thing you need to make sure is have another hose. A lot of people have a septic spray system that when they're emptying their rig you can actually hook a hose up. Don't use your water hose. Use a separate hose just for that just in case you get backwash. So uh, make sure you have a separate hose and you may want to give it a different color, a different uh, uh, put a marking on it that you use for your septic um, to rinse out the tank. And the other last thing you might want to make sure you do for water is if you're going into a cold area or a freezing area, you want to get they have a heat wrap uh, tape that you can get, or you can get a, a cord that wraps around your uh, water. Um, hose that you plug in that will keep you from freezing up. Let me remind you on that. When, make sure you have extra at the end and make sure you put an extra wrap around the actual faucet. I actually once had my thing all uh, insulated well. I put insulation on it and I put the little wrap wire in it and kept it warm and I still got froze up because it froze at the, uh, at the spout. So make sure you can put a couple of extra wraps of wire around that spout to also keep that warm so it doesn't freeze up. And uh, of course, try to protect everything or get as close to the rig you can with the other side, making sure that nothing freezes between the hose and the fitting. So that's a lot of stuff, I know. So I, uh, I'm gonna leave it at that to give you generally a, a good idea of what you need for the exterior of your rigs. Um, of your truck, of your RV, and, and, and tools. And this is the time to start getting all this stuff. This is why we also suggest you do a lot of extended trips before you go full timing. This will teach you 
and show you exactly what will work best for you. And, and every rig's got different sizes, so I, I can probably carry more than a guy that has a trailer, um, where somebody with a motorhome might be able to carry more than me. So you have to figure out what sizes of things will work for you, how to store it, how to protect it. Uh, the other thing I, I didn't mention is uh, make sure that you find, I use totes, I like to use little totes. The problem is, is finding the right totes. So you want some that are easy to get into and you want other ones that's not that important. Uh, of course, you. Uh, the other thing that we didn't talk about too much was barbecues and things like that and extra propane. Um, I like to put, I have a little barbecue so I can put it in a tote so I don't have to get the mess that comes out of a barbecue all over the floors of my storage area. So these are the things to think about. Um, of course, you've got to think about chairs and things that you want when you're outside. Uh, there's little uh, carpetings that you may want that lay down to help from putting, uh, tr uh, tracking in so much dirt into the rig. Uh, the chairs and the different kind of adapters, maybe even cooking hot dogs and marshmallows. You're going to want to make sure that you have those tools. And those are the kind of things you want to get to easily. So don't store them in something that's hard to get them out. So you have to think this stuff through. And that's why the trial runs are important. So I hope this was a good video. It's a lot of information. And I really hope everybody has a great time out there. Um, this first two years, you think, oh my gosh, it's such a long time. I'm telling you, that two years ago fast. And you will learn so much in the first two years before you go full-timing um, that when you do go full-timing, you're going to say, thank goodness I had trial runs. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Travel Quest. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave comments below. Please share our videos and please subscribe. Um, let people know what we're doing here. We're trying to make everything nicer for you and hopefully you learn from our mistakes. So once again, I'm Rob Scribner. Thanks for watching. Bye now.